when we think of illness and ailments, um, it's obviously a range of various different ailments that comes to mind. They are the, of these ailments, there are many that are well known to us as the public, and there are, there are many that's unknown to us. Today we speak to a young lady who's been fighting a disorder that's not so well put into the public. That ailment is called systemic lupus. I'm here at the home of Hanan Smith, who is currently a survivor of systemic lupus. We chat to her about her life experience since 2016, and she would be best to explain to you exactly what she's gone through over the last while. The reason why the SA Diplomat Abroad has taken note of this case is specifically for the reason that this young lady, only 18 years old, has put other people at the forefront in trying to assist them through a foundation that she is looking to launch very soon to assist financially and to support people with a, a similar ailment. This is the SA Diplomat Abroad. I'm Abdurraouf Hanslow. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and pound the notification bell. We chat to Hanan Smith about systemic lupus. Too many times ailments are swept under the carpet and we don't know about them. There's ailments that's well known to society and there's ailments that's not so well known to society. Today we speak about systemic lupus and I think everyone of our viewers needs a bit of education as far as systemic lupus is concerned. The lady to my left is Hanan Smith. She's a survivor of systemic lupus and she's currently still fighting the battle to get through this. In 2016 her journey started and her nightmare started with this uh, very uh, 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 horrid illness um, that she had uh, contracted. Hanan is not only a person that suffers from this ailment, she's also someone that has taken the initiative and her illness to create awareness about her, her ailment and to create a foundation for support and financing for future sufferers of this exact ailment. Now, the one disclosure I have to make is that we've done our research as to find, finding organizations that support people with this ailment and there are very few that we have found internationally and in South Africa there's not a very active organization that assists these people. Hopefully this young lady to my left will change all of that going forward. Welcome to the SA Diplomat Abroad, uh, Hanan. Um, your journey started, as I said, in 2016. So I think the main thing that we, we want to ask you to do is to draw us a timeline of exactly what you went through since 2016 to the current day. Um, so in 2016, I got juvenile arthritis and renal phenomena. Um, juvenile arthritis was normal for me because my, everybody in my family has arthritis yeah. so I didn't like quite take it serious or anything and then um, the renoids became a problem because yeah. that's how lupus starts yeah. it starts up slowly yeah. so um, 2017 I got renoids and explain to us what, what, what were the symptoms of renoids um, so the renoids was I couldn't there was no um, circulation oh. in my hands and in my feet so then the Color would change mm -hmm. and it would, it would be extremely cold. So my hands would be blue because oh, there's no circulation. Mm -hmm. And then um, I got lupus at the end of 2017, and that's when my whole life just turned upside down. Okay, now, now, now when you say your life turned upside down, um, in 2016, what were you doing when you were diagnosed with? Um, 
the initial stages of juvenile arthritis? Um, I was at the time I was at school in yeah. the team. And I was very active, very outgoing, um, a social person. But the illness changed that. Because okay. there's not a lot of things that I can do anymore because of mm -hmm. the illness. Now, during this time, uh, Hanan, I mean, you, you obviously were a very active person at school, as I ascertained from what you're saying. Um, what were your activities that you partook uh, in at school? Um, up to 2016 before you left? Um, so I've, I've always been an athlete like, since primary school really. and I, I did ballet and dance classes so I was quite fit to say. Um, so you were a ballerina yeah. uh, and you, you were a sports, <laughs> sportswoman yeah. as well? Yeah, many sports. Okay. And how is that, how has the onset of this ailment impacted that? You're like drastically because I can't exert myself to try to do something because it's either painful or I just can't let my body do it. So that was the juvenile arthritis in 2016 mm -hmm. and then came 2017. So you left school in 2016 yes. and then came 2017 and explain to us what, what were the events of 2017 that happened. So 2017, um, I left, I took a, okay, mm -hmm. I just, my parents said that no, your, your health comes first. Mm -hmm. So I took it easy and then I decided I'm going to go back to school. Yeah. So um, I went back to College of Cape Town, CCT, Financial Management. That went really good. And then I just, I got sick again. Mm. And then I dropped, dropped out, but I left. But I would like to go back and finish my studies. Okay, so you, you have an interest in financial management? Yes. Oh, okay. So 2017 was not only the one uh, the second diagnosis of, of an, another ailment, but it was also the main diagnosis of your systemic lupus as well. How, what did you go through mentally and, and physically during that period after you were diagnosed? At the beginning it was difficult, like I didn't know what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do, like my whole life, it's just like, mm. you have illness. Mm. So basically, the, everybody asked me, oh, what is lupus? What's it? Mm. Oh, sure, I'm like, is it cancer? And I'm like, it's not cancer, it's a blood disorder. And they're just like, oh, shame. Like, mm. It's not just shame, it's more to it. Um, and then I decided that I don't, I, 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 I think you not know what lupus is. Like, I was like that. Mm. And then I, now I want to know, let people know what lupus really actually is. Because most of them there is no yeah. so, so in your own words, um, give the viewers a short synopsis of, of, of what lupus is. Uh, you know more than what I, I know as I'm sitting here. Uh, just give a short synopsis of exactly what lupus is. Um, lupus is an autoimmune, a autoimmune disease that, that affects your organs. Um, so basically, your body is trying to kill itself, it's attacking itself. So instead of your body um, helping, you, uh, uh, rebuilding good cells, they're not, they're not rebuilding good cells, they're just getting all weaker. So it's a regeneration of yeah. cells, not a, not a, a generation of cells, a regeneration of cells. Yes. Okay, so it's a regression. In, 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 so it's your immune system that's basically compromised yes. at the same time. Now, obviously, during this period, it must have been turmoil for you. You've been diagnosed with a major ailment, um, physically and mentally. Mentally, it must have been very challenging on, on, on yourself. What type of support was around you as far as organizations are concerned and as far as your family were concerned? Um, at the beginning, I didn't want anybody to know that I have lupus. Um, then I was like sad and everything and I didn't, I didn't want people to look at me as a disease. So, so I still let nobody know what, but my family, they're just the best. I won't forget the night I um, was in the hospital, I told my mother not to not to let anybody know that I'm sick 
And so she said, this one really, we're going to have to tell it. And when I saw uh, all of them came into the room, I just, and they all hugged me. And that's when I burst out crying. Because I thought that they took at me differently. Because of this disease, I thought that I would be judged. Like. So the love and support that I got from them was unbelievable. And till today, they were the best ever. I can count on them for anything I eat. Now, now um, uh, while, while you compose yourself, uh, uh, Hanan, um, you know, for, for the viewer's sake, uh, um, I, I've had the opportunity to sit with you prior to this interview. And uh, immediately I could see, um, although there's a breakdown now, I could see strength from your side. And I could see that, that you are willing to take this thing on head on and to fight the battle, not only for yourself, but for others too. So, besides the fact that you, you had your family around you, were there any organizations or support from structures outside of your family that offered to assist you uh, mentally and physically and financially? Um, at the beginning we had um, like talks where um, all the lupus ladies come and we gather at somebody's house mm. and then they'll just all chat there for the day to mm. say like how we're feeling and then they'll get like a speaker to just like motivate us and there's another one um, Andrea's kid where she um, she is an organization where she uh, has a, a support group where you can go and communicate to it okay now now now, now you, at least there was there, there was that type of support mm -hmm. um, you've also taken the initiative to tell your story on various mediums um, and you've also many people have latched onto your story in, in uh, over the years um, tell us about that first story you posted to uh, your website um, and and your social media accounts and for the viewers sake if you could just tell us what where the website is how to find the website and then also um, uh, your Facebook page um, so I decided I was in hospital and my doctor suggested that I should write my feelings on a page. Mm. I thought it was silly at first but it made me feel so much better. Um, then I started writing about like what I've been through the last few days mm. and I didn't really, I, I didn't, ex I didn't want to post it but uh, there was something telling me to let the people know what lupus actually is and how you go through it. So I posted it and I didn't expect the outcome that I got yeah. because I thought that people would be like, oh no, it's just lupus, yeah. right? So then when I, start, when I noticed that people are interested, they want to know how and why and oh, it's, it's, it's like cancer, but it's also life threatening. Yeah. Yeah. So. Early on, I tried to befriend you on Facebook, but I, I just realized I couldn't because your, your friends list is, is full. <laughs> so, um, I know when, when uh, Ziad called me um, uh, yesterday to say that uh, he'd like me to meet you, um, the first thing that, that he said to me is, this is a young lady that's looking to assist others. So, what are your aims and objectives surrounding um, helping people in the future. What what do you plan to put together? What what, what are your aspirations? Um, is it a sort of support group, or is it a financial support group that you, or, or both, that you'd like to put in place uh, in the future with the assistance of, of of the public to create awareness around? Um, I'd like it to be both um, financial and Uh, financial and, and general support. Yeah, general, and general support. support. Yes. Because most, um, most loopies uh, doesn't have so good right support mm. and most of them cannot afford. You, um, you, you mentioned the term loopies. Yeah. What is loopies? We call ourselves loopies. You call um, yourselves loopies? Yeah, okay. loopies. Okay. okay, okay. So so this foundation basically would, would then be a sort of a structure that would offer uh, psychological support um, as well as financial support to yes. those. So from a financial perspective, what have you gone through financially uh, and your family due to your illness? Um, 
um, medical forms and medication um, medication. Okay. So medication will be really expensive mm. and that's weekly. Mm. So and medical forms as well. Um, mm. We can I say oh, we have to go to uh, we have to go from private hospital to state hospital. hospital. Okay. Now, 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 um, when, when looking at that in, in entire uh, structure, I mean, um, that must have been a tremendous amount of strain yes. on yourself and your family. You're a young lady. You 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 were a scholar when when you contracted the yeah. the ailment. Mm -hmm. So you were the responsibility of your parents and your family. So um, your treatment obviously has taken a, a financial knock mm -hmm. on the entire family. When, coming, when looking at your treatment, explain to me what types of treatments are you currently on at the moment? So, at the beginning, my treatment wasn't um, mm. severe as it is now. Yeah. So, I was just on like normal prednisone, normal chloroquine, that was like fine. Mm. But then, um, the lupus spread to my brain. Okay. And it caused, I get seizures. Seizures. Yeah. Seizures, yeah. Um, so, the lupus is in my brain now. Mm. So I have to, so when they went to my brain, they decided that they are going to put me on chemo. Okay. I was for six months on chemo, mm -hmm. and that made me just very ill. Like, and the side effects of that yeah, is the obviously side effects of yeah. The, yeah. the worst. Um, and then after the six months were, of chemo was done, I, they started a new drug on me to mm -hmm. taste it, and it's, it's working. So hopefully, inshallah. Inshallah. Tell me something. You you told me a good story because obviously the chemotherapy. One of the major side effects of chemotherapy is hair loss. Mm -hmm. So just before uh, we we switched the camera on, you were telling me this 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 story of the Good Samaritan with the week, and you that had lost your had lost your your hair. For the viewers' sake, would you like to share that story with the so viewers? So I was just playing around with my friends and asked, and I made a post on my WhatsApp. Um, asking my friends like don't they have like wigs for me or know anybody that has wigs for me and they were like you know you must post it on social media like they took it serious um, and then they posted it on social media and I asked this one uncle to also share it um, because it was kind of a good cause because I went through it because, yeah. and I sent him my posts and he wasn't sure if like if he should post the picture of me looking for a week. Yeah. And then oh, and he when he read the, my post to his wife, he said he was very touched by it. And that just made him decide that he wants to do this for me. And then he and his wife raised funds for me to purchase a week and you broke me a week. So, I mean, you, you've had some good Samaritans out there that have supported you yes. in, in the past. And, and, and not only that, I mean, I heard the makeup stories. Yeah, and, the ma and he got me photo shoots, he got me um, sponsors, people gave me things. So, this is something that you want to carry over yes. to, 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 to people also suffering from this, from this ailment. So, Basically, the SA Diplomat Abroad is going to try and assist you as far as we can. Um, we're going to try, with the assistance of a, a local company in South, in South Africa, to launch a, uh, a YouTube channel for you, so you can tell your story, number one. And then number two, we, we'd also like to try and get the proper equipment for you for that, uh, to, to get that uh, YouTube channel up and running. And then we're going to assist further by trying to get you as much exposure as possible for the foundation. Now, from our side, um, Hanan, we, we'd like to thank you for, for sharing your story with us. The SA Diplomatic Bureau doesn't normally do this type of, these types of stories. We, we, we focus on business. But I think this is a very worthy cause and I think uh, it just brings provenance uh, onto our, our medium uh, as well. So we're going to obviously encourage you to, we're going to push as hard as we can and we're going to try and encourage you to be successful in, in launching this foundation that would eventually assist other people suffering from this same, this same ailment. 
So thank you for your presence and thank you for being here to, and, and chatting to us about uh, your ailment and, and what the future holds for you and the other sufferers of, of this, uh, this very horrid uh, ailment. This is the SA Diplomat Abroad. I'm Abdurraouf Hanslow and we've been speaking to Hanan Smith, um, a lady that is a warrior, a lady that comes across to us as a very strong, willed person and someone that we need in the forefront against the fight of any ailment. This is the type of characters that we require. Hanan is someone, in, in our opinion, that can head up this type of challenge of assisting those suffering from this horrid ailment called uh, systemic lupus. We are very naive when it comes to this type of ailments, but we've learnt today a bit more about what people with this uh, specific disease goes through. Don't forget to like this channel, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the channel, like the video and pound the notification bell. Find us also on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus and all your social media channels. Hanan, I'm just going to ask quickly to just give us a uh, quick direction as to finding your website and to finding your social media um, accounts. On social media, I'm just Hanan Smith. You can get me on Instagram and Facebook and on Twitter. Okay. As well as Wix as Hanan2002 Smith. That's the Wix website. So she's launched a Wix website as well. Hanan, thank you very much for your time. Until next time, goodbye. So my personal message to you guys are that your faith in mind should be strong. Alhamdulillah for me, my iman is very strong. As I promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that every day I will read my Quran. And that's what got me through this. Every day I wake up and my toba that Allah protect me and guide me through this journey. As it's difficult. I have my days where I'm not feeling Alhamdulillah but most of the time I am because my faith and also Allah I can talk to him anytime and I know he'll be there for me.